another edition of your weekly program, African Union Journal on Africa 24. Hello and thanks for joining us. The African Union Journal brings to you updates on the actions of the African Union. The number of people forced to flee because of war, violence and human rights violation is increasing on the African continent. From the Horn of Africa to East Africa, Central Africa and West Africa, over 30 million people are registered as internally displaced persons, refugees and asylum seekers, according to the figures from the African Union and the United Nations. Updates on the refugee situation in this report. Cases of uprooted people are multiplying rapidly on the continent. In the Sahel region alone, cases have risen from 217,000 to a level of 2.1 million by the end of 2021, according to data from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. In East Africa, the number of refugees has almost tripled from 1.82 million in 2012, including 300,000 new refugees during 2021. Across the continent, the situation deserves the attention of states and partners, according to the African nation. Six of the most important crises with alarming humanitarian consequences are in Africa, with more than 13 million displaced people, refugees and asylum seekers. It returns us to our responsibility to take the evil by the root, to a prophylaxis of tensions, addressing the root causes of humanitarian situations, because it's better to prevent than to try to cure. In South Sudan, which has one of the largest flows of forced displacement in Africa, nearly 2 million people in the country are internally displaced. In addition, there are more than 2 million South Sudanese refugees in Ethiopia, Sudan and Uganda. In order to provide rations to the refugees, the World Food Programme estimates its needs in East Africa between April and September 2022 at $226 million. For the African Union, there is a need for a Pan-African institution, such as the African Humanitarian Agency, to coordinate the efforts of governments, NGOs and international agencies. We need an African institution. If it did not exist, it had to be created, dedicated essentially to coordinating African intervention of humanitarian crisis issue. Having an institution in terms of governance is extremely important. It also allows us to coordinate all efforts dedicated to responding to humanitarian crisis. Forced displacement is mainly due to protracted conflicts, inter-community conflicts, persecution and human rights violations, food insecurity, limited access to basic social services, among others. To limit the displacement of populations in countries affected by conflict, international agencies recommend thinking about strategies that are not solely military. For us at UNHCR, for us at the United Nations, and for us humanitarian actors, the answer comes from the need not to invest only in the security response, in weapons, but to invest greatly on the contrary in the development of these regions, because it's not the role of the countries, they are quite developed areas in these countries, but in the forgotten regions for the benefits of a population that has been marginalized and to reintegrate these populations into the nation states. Sub-Saharan Africa alone accounts for more than 26% of the world's refugees, according to the United Nations. In West and Central Africa, there were approximately 11.9 million people of concern to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees at the end of 2021. The African Union is determined to significantly reduce the number of refugees and internally displaced persons on the continent. Building on its commitments under international conventions, the Pan-African Institution, during the last summit in Malabo in Equatorial Guinea, established the African Humanitarian Agency. More in this report. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has slowed down refugees' empowerment efforts undertaken by several states on the continent. According to the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahamad, climate disruption characterized by uncontrolled floods and prolonged droughts is another level of pressure on populations. Despite some timid progress, the African Union is committed to helping refugees at regional and continental level. Dans une démarche proactive d'anticipation. The African Union has developed normative and operational instruments to improve the living conditions of refugees and internally displaced persons on the continent. At the normative level, we should mention among others the Kampala Convention adopted in 2009 and the related declaration, which specify the objective and modalities of action in favor of refugees and other persons forced to dis displacement. At the operation level, regional plans to manage refugee crises have been put in place. For the past five years, the funds required for the operation have not been able to exceed the 50% mark. The first donor conference, it should be recalled, was held 11 years ago in 2011. More concretely, the heads of state of the African Union have completed the institutional architecture for the African Union by establishing an African humanitarian agency. During the 15th Extraordinary Summit on Humanitarian Issues held in Malabo on May 27, advocacy by partners raised $114 million of the $14 billion needed to care for displaced persons and refugees. I am also pleased because it is an eloquent testimony in finding lasting solutions to forced displacement on the African continent. You talked about the African Humanitarian Agency. We will work to operationalize it as soon as possible and the documents will be submitted at the summit. The refugee crisis and its corollaries are not sparing any region of the continent. In North Africa alone, more than 14 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance, according to the African Union Commission. In addition to emergency solutions, the heads of state of the Pan-African Organization agree that sustainable solutions can be found in the respect of democratic principles, the promotion of good governance, conflict prevention and economic development. Finding innovative and sustainable solutions for financing the African Union and improving the resilience of African economies. This was the objective of the high-level meeting on the financing of the African Union held on the 13th to the 14th of June 2022 in Rabat in Morocco. Let's follow this report. On June 13 to 14, 2022, the African Union's Committee of 15 Finance Ministers, F15, held its high-level meeting in Rabat, Morocco. The objective of these discussions was to find innovative, sustainable and durable solutions for the financing of African Union, knowing that member states contribute only 31% of the institution's budget. We are here to look into issues of financing the Union's agenda of integration, of development, of sustainability, self-reliance, and um, how that can be achieved against the odds of the challenges of COVID-19, of uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and other challenges constraining the fiscal space in the member states, how that can be achieved. Long before the current crisis, about 30 member states of the Pan-African institution were already in default, a situation that creates a significant funding gap between the projected budget and actual funding, hindering the effective implementation of the African Union's program. To address this situation, the African Union adopted in 2016 a decision based on a levy of 0.2% of the value of eligible goods imported into a member state of the institution. Only the decision, which will be operational since 2017, is struggling to be implemented. La performance budgétaire de l'Union africaine 
The budgetary performance of the African Union should be made a top priority in order to make the much hoped for transition from a logic of means to a logic of results. Indeed, the funding constraints that currently weigh on the Union's budget should encourage us not only to seek additional sources of funding, but above all to optimize the use of available resources. Participants at the African Union refinancing meeting also discussed a number of hot topics including post-COVID-19, the Ukrainian crisis and economy recovery, all aimed at building the resilience of African economies. This F15 committee retreat comes at a particularly difficult time for our continent and at a time when the whole world is suffering from the consequences of an unprecedented health crisis coupled with a geopolitical crisis of great magnitude. Indeed, since 2020 and the outbreak of the economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, which plunged our continent into a recession for the first time in decades, African economies have been facing a have been facing an existing crisis which calls into question the sustainability of our growth models, the viability of our public finances, and the effectiveness of our social protection system. Et l'efficacité de nos systèmes de protection sociale. Beyond its intended purpose, this high-level meeting was attended by, among others, finance ministers of AU member states, the AU Commissioner of Economic Development, Trade, Industry and Mining, experts from the committee's finance ministries, permanent representative as well as representative of the AU Commission and the African Collaborative Budget Reform Initiative. On to our news in brief for this edition, the African Union organized a symposium on the 28th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda on the 16th of June 2022. The second extraordinary session of the African Union Specialized Technical Committee on Transport, Transcontinental and Interregional Infrastructure and Energy approved urgent measures to address the impacts of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis and the African Common Position for COP27. And the African Union held a specialized training course for African election observers in Rabat, Morocco, from the 13th to the 17th of June 2022. Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the African Union Commission organized on June 16, 2022, at the African Union headquarters in Addis Abeba, a symposium on the 28th commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda. In his speech for the occasion, Bankole Adeoye, Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the African Union Commission, specified that this symposium aimed, aimed at providing recommendations to political decision makers on how to fight against all forms of manifestations of genocide should also provide a platform to address emerging threats to stability and national cohesion in African societies. Nearly 300 participants took part in this work initiated by the African Union, the Embassy of the Republic of Rwanda in Ethiopia, the Permanent Mission to the African Union in collaboration with the Institute for Peace and Security Studies. The second extraordinary session of the African Union Specialized Technical Committee on Transport, Transcontinental and Interregional Infrastructure and Energy was held from 14 to 16 June 2022 at the African Union headquarters in Addis Abeba. The session discussed the impact of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis on the energy and infrastructure sectors in Africa, the ripple effects of which could across many sectors. Another critical topic addressed during this working session was the Common African Statement on Energy Access and Energy Transition expected at COP27 to be held in Egypt in November this year. Thus, decisions on the Russian-Ukrainian crisis, the Common African Statement on Energy Access and Fair Transition in Africa, the Dispute Settlement Mechanism on the Single African Air transport market and the revised African civil aviation policy was taken during this task. 
the Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the African Union Commission and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation and Moroccan Expatriates of the Kingdom of Morocco organized from June 17, 2022, a specialized training workshop for African Union short-term election observers. This workshop, which brought together 30 participants from the five regions of the African continent, has at its main objective the capacity building of short-term election observers from the African Union in different areas of election observation. In his speech, Ban Kole Adeoye, Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the African Union Commission, reassured on the importance of such a continent program which will contribute to increasing transparency, impartiality, fairness and probity of electoral processes in Africa. Nasser Burita, Moroccan Minister of Foreign Affairs, stressed the importance of election observation and monitoring as integral parts of democratic and electoral processes in Africa. The Department of Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Mineral Resources of the African Commission is organizing from the 27th of June to the 1st of July 2022 in Cairo, Egypt, the first annual forum of small and medium-sized enterprises in collaboration with the Africa Business Council and the Pan-African Association of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, organized under the team Propelling industrialization through small and medium-sized enterprises, women and young entrepreneurs for inclusive development. The main objective of this exhibition is to promote, improve skills and develop strategies for a fruitful sector and more inclusive African small and medium-sized enterprises in order to achieve the industrialization of Africa in the context of the integrated market. An ordinary session of the Pan-African Parliament, the legislative arm of the African Union, is scheduled from the 27th of June to the 2nd of July 2022 at the headquarters of the Pan-African Institution in Midran, South Africa. The main issue on the agenda of this session will be the election of the new Bureau of the Pan-African Parliament scheduled for June 29, 2022. The leadership of the other structures of the Parliament, including standing committees and regional caucuses and teams, will also be renewed during this session. The Member States of the African Union will celebrate the International African Women's Day on the 31st of July, 2022. This day aims to affirm the role of women's organizations for the political freedom of Africa and to promote the economic and social status of women on the continent. This Pan-African Women's Day will be celebrated and observed in all African Union member states' capitals with national programs and various activities. Monique Sensabagenwa is the first woman to hold the post of Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission, a position she held since February 2021. With more than 25 years of experience, this economist by training intends to contribute to the growth of the African Union by actively participating in the implementation of financial reforms and the promotion of gender. More about Monique Sensabagenwa in this report. At 51, Dr. Monique Santabaganwa, a Rwandan national, is the first woman to hold the position of vice chairperson of the African Union Commission. Elected in February 2021, Monique Santabaganwa, an economist by training, plays a leading role in the implementation of reforms, particularly in administration and finance within the Pan African institution. To look into matters of governance, accountability, governing according to rules, and um, uh, tackling impunity. So accountability in governance is number one. Number two is in the area of human capital and then manage 
performance. Number three, in the area of finance, I committed to driving the financial reform impl implementation, um, ensure that uh, we improve our financial management, have um, uh, clean audit reports. Determined to make the African Union shine during her four-year term, Monique Santabaganwa, with her 25 years of experience in the field of economies, intends to inject a new dynamic into the financial sphere of the Institute. Percent actually is not an underperformance. This is an austerity uh, measure that is taken uh, because of uh, the uh, COVID-19. The capacity of the financing of the operations of our union to ensure at least 75% of our programs. So we are on course uh, on, on those um, uh, targets, which are set to be evaluated by the year 2025. As the first female vice chairperson of the African Union Commission, Monique Santabaganwa emphasizes her contribution to promoting gender issues, a leitmotiv that has been an integral part of her development process during her time at the Rwandan Ministry of Finance and today as she collaborates in the implementation of the African Union's financial reforms. Um, the power of women, Je crois en la force des femmes, juste sur la base des simples mathématiques. Vous le savez, nous sommes plus que la majorité des citoyens de l'Afrique. Et les femmes en Afrique, vous les retrouvez en pleine activité dans tous les secteurs, notamment dans le secteur de l'agriculture. Married with three children, Monique Santabaganwa is known in her native Rwanda for having held the position of vice governor of the country's national bank and several ministerial positions. Today, thanks to her experience in the field of administration and financial management, Monique Santabaganwa is an emblematic figure of the female gender. Thank you for watching the Africa Union Journal. Stay tuned for more programs on Africa 24.